Well, not the way you drew it up. The Angels hit five home runs today, two by Shohei Otani. Lance Lynn gives up eight runs, and the White Sox end the month of May with a tough loss at home. 12 to 5 is your final score. It's Super White Sox Post Game Live here with the legend Isaac Ian. I'm Chuck Garfine. Last night, you said last night's game was the best game, overall game, you've seen the White Sox play this year? This year, yes. This year. The game. The game, Maybe right. sometimes, you know, C's thrown well, uh, Jolito throw one hitter, uh, Lynx throw two hitters, you know what I mean? But the, the game in general. The complete every, team. The complete, is a team game. Yeah. That was, that was an outstanding game. That was fun to watch. Right. So one of the frustrating things about the team this year and this wasn't just on the, all, the whole team today. I mean, Lance Lynn's struggles had a lot to do with it. But they go from that great win yesterday to this today. And it's the roller coaster of the season that continues to go so up and down. I always believe, I and mean, people in baseball should believe, the starting pitcher set the tone. And at times, recently, Lynn was setting the tone in yes, a good way. Yes, And meanwhile, he did it today. Mm -hmm. And like yesterday... You know, first at bat, first hitter, home run. Jolito turn around completely and he pitched well. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. I say, okay, one run, no mean anything. We can come back. And overall, it was a great game. And I think it, it's, it's when you see, I think one, he went another inning for the good, mm -hmm. for, for, to help his ball club. Right. So give me another inning. A lot of people ask me, why he still still in the ball, in the ball, you know, in the ball game when they have a day off tomorrow? I said, well, they can say the bullpen. Well, well Lino said the bullpen. Salted this. Salton did a tremendous job. Jesse Salton, yes. And one thing about it, he just, uh, it's something you always believe. I hope, that, okay, this is the beginning of the group round. This is the beginning of the good stuff. It sounds out. like last year. It, this is the beginning <laughs> of the great thing going to happen. And all of yeah. a sudden, this everything happens. goes different. Yeah, I mean, they complete win different. this game. They win the game on Sunday in Detroit, they get a split. They win this game today, they win this series, and they're just not able to do it. So, in the beginning of every series, we have what we call a segment called Stop That Guy. Stop that guy in this series, you win this series. Well, this is one of those teams, maybe the only team, where it's two guys. you got to stop two guys in Trout and Otani. And for the most part, for the most part, first two games of the series, they were able to do that today. Lance Lynn could not stop either of them. They combined for three homers and six RBIs off Lance Lynn. Well, it's, if we talk about it, you know I me, mean, those two guys, well, talk about, talk about Trout, talk about legend. Yeah. Talk about Trout, talk about Hall of Fame. And in and, and some, some way with Otani. But Otani, see, he looked like he hit the same pitch three times in the same spot and end up in the same spot. Yeah. Start in the same spot, end up in the same spot. And, and the, those two guys, they're not going to beat you. Today, it, was, it happened during the game when Otani got men on second base, 6 1, open base. They pitched to him, he put it 8, eight to 1. Yeah, that was the game. What happened? When you get punched in the stomach, I don't care how many rounds you got left, mm -hmm. everybody just went down. Yeah. 6 1, to me, the, the how you say that? Relievers, it was a relievers day, bullpen day for them. If they keep that game like that, it might be, maybe some change. Yeah. It does it. Lynn's kryptonite this year has been the first inning. Uh, if he does well in the first inning, usually that means he's going to have a good game. And here, first inning today, didn't have it. And Trout demolished this baseball one two count. Oh, that's not good. That he was right, right in the middle of the plate. I, 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 obviously, you don't want to throw the ball there. Yeah. You wanted that, I think it was a slider, run off the plate from him, and the ball stayed right in the middle. 461 feet. That's one of the longest hit here at the park this season. Uh, Roxy, uh, actually, it is the longest. The longest. That was longer than the, the, the uh, tiny yeah, one? Yeah, that was longer. That's what they say. So if it feels like Mike Trout is always on base against the White Sox, uh, that is because he is. These are the highest on-base percentages against the White Sox all time with a minimum of 200 plate appearances. It's Babe Ruth one, Trout two, and then Ted Williams, Lou Gehrig, and Jimmy Fox, some of the all-time greats. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> over the day. Oh, okay. My question is, who come up with those numbers? 
What do you mean, who came up with it? Well, they would have to be a smart, a geek. Like a geek? Yeah, it's like... There's a lot of white socks, not white socks, there's a lot of baseball fans who love the numbers and they came up with no, that. No, no, I like that. That's yeah. why, who came up with that? Actually, someone from the Angels came up with that. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That's a, that's a good thing to oh, see. All right, but they don't just have Trout. They've got Otani, who came in 8 for 18 with a home run off of Lance Lynn. He homered last night off of Giolito, and that is gone. You're right. All three home runs roughly in the same spot for Otani. Most, uh, this one was more around the plate. Yeah. The one before, it was a little up in the plate. My God, yeah. anybody can hit that pitch. Yeah. What was Kopech doing to get him out? Throwing it, what, high, right? High in. Yes. Making chase. I'm not going to say he's just, oh, he, he got a lot of holes because he's not. <laughs> he's just been so good. And where's but this one? Oh, look at that. Get foul. It won't. Get foul. Get well. Get no. foul. No, it won't. Ouch. So that was a two-run homer to make it eight to one. So that was his first base open. I, I, I was a little upset about this moment mm -hmm. because besides that, it was behind the count. I, I'm not going to say this, this pitch changed the game, but it did it. But uh, it, the it, game can it be, basically ended the it game. Can, it, it can make a little different yeah. for the rest of the game. All right, good thing that Otani does not play in the AL Central because he has torched the White Sox with home runs. He now has 12 in only 31 games. He's hit more home runs against the White Sox than he has against the Astros in 39 less games. No, if, before that, he, he faced all those guys. Also, guys in the division, obviously, you're going to have better numbers against your own division. Yeah. White Sox don't have nothing to do with the division of Otani on them. Yeah, so they got, I think, a three maybe games. Maybe the Crosstown game would be interesting with Otani come to the Cubs. Oh, look what you're doing there. You're, hey. just, you're just trolling. No, I, 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 why? Why? Ozzy Gee never sit here and lie to people or make stuff happen. I say it would be interesting. You never know. Is Otani going to be a Crosstown game against the White Sox? Well, I thought you were going to repeat what you said earlier this week. What people? If people watch out, they should know. Okay. I got the info. I got the info. You got info. I got free one, but I got the you info. You got info that Otani would come to Chicago to play for the Cubs. No, the only reason, one. It, no, no, I said the only reason might not because it's too cold in Chicago. Too cold. So, White Sox fans, you want bitter cold <laughs> coming to Chicago to the point where Otani will not sign with the Crosstown Rivals. That'd be nice. I will, I will, I will say, hey, say, this is a great sushi place. By the way, this is one thing they told me also. What's the picture? Darvish? You Darvish. Okay. He, 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 is Darvish talked to Otani? Yeah. But coming here, Otani never come to Chicago. Really? Yes. Somebody hear me say something. Yeah. By yeah. the way, no, somebody. My son, yeah. Ozzy Jr. Yeah. said, Dad, do you know how Darvish have a tough time in Chicago? He hates yeah. Chicago. He don't like Chicago. Not the ball club. Not the people. Something about, you know, like Chicago. He's, if Otani talks he's to Otani Darvish... <laughs> Otani's not coming. I ain't going there. I ain't <laughs> okay. going there. Because uh, he's, Darvish, he's got a tough time here in Chicago. All right. Well, Trout and Otani hit the two longest home runs at guaranteed rate this year. There it is. Trout, 461. Shohei Otani, 459. Otani's homer last night was number one for about 15, 16 hours. It is now third. But these might have been the two longest home runs hit at guaranteed rate this season. But we have seen better. Why don't we go way back to 2002? Frank Thomas. This is boring. This is not boring. Everything good thing happened to Frank. Oh my God, he that gets a big boy too. Yeah, is that Johan Santana? Oh yes. Welcome to, oh Ooh, my God. That is a concourse shot. 495 feet by Big I, Frank. I, are you sure because Mark McGuire, I remember I was playing shorts to Mark McGuire, they have a new era yeah. sign back there and he does sign against James Baldwin. Really? Yes. Uh, so maybe that was further than this one. But I believe the furthest home run hit at Guaranteed Red Field was this one. Joe Borchard, 04. Ouch, I guess I was there. Yeah, you were managing. 504 feet. Where does this thing end up? I know it's on the concourse. Wow. Woo! Yes. Some, so, about, someone's I, got that baseball. How about, the, how about Mauer against Freddy Garcia? Ready? Garcia gave up a big homer to Mauer. That ball was landing in Griffin, you know, all the way down on the concourse. Indiana. <laughs> in Indiana. Uh, Brett Myers gave up the home run to Borchard. Uh, Borchard struck out three times after that. I, 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 you, you, you check it out? I looked it up. I, I, I made that bet. Yeah, you. I made that people like, you crazy. I went there to Joey Cora and say, 
wow, look at that home run. We told you. I said, it was struck out three times, and he did. Well, <laughs> That no I mean, that, this is this no is Ozzy. Uh, Borchard hits a home run, and you go to Joe Cor Joey Cora. And you no, go, that we sit next to me. I know. You yeah. my kid go. You see that as a home run? Say, don't worry about it. It was struck out three times, and he did. <laughs> I like. I just make that tail off. I like. And, and Joey told me shut up, and my kids were all over me. All coaches like, really? Why would you say really? that? I know you pulling for the guy or not? I say yes, I do, but that's realistic. He went by the third time. I turned around. And go. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, Jaime Berea, uh, mostly a reliever this year, uh, gave up one earned run in his last 200, or 200, one earned run in his last 25 in the third inning. So coming into this game, I'm like, uh, if he's going to continue to pitch like this, the Sox could be in for a rough day. I just wasn't sure how long he was going to go. He only gives up one run over five. What did you see from him today? Great stop. You know, this kid is pitching well. He makes him uh, pitching very well, very good. Yeah. Fastball is good. Change up a lot of breaking balls and he keeps the team in the game. And he earned it. You know, it's just those guys can do anything about it with this, with all the stuff we have. Yeah, I mean, it would be great to be a pitcher with a big lead that he had. It was six to one, it was eight to one. You know, listen, he's just, well, that changeup was nasty and uh, the White Sox just a lot of swings and misses. There. By the way, he got, he got himself in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. We just not had the big hit when they, it, when they come. You know, he was excited about it. He pitched pretty good baseball game. Nowadays, you don't throw 100, you're not a good pitch. This guy makes a pitch very well for day for him. All right, so we know there's going to be a roster thing that's going to happen once Elvis Andrews is back. You got Jake Berger playing second base here today. What's this all going to mean going forward? You want to get him in the lineup? I mean, Jake Berger, he's got the bat. He wasn't even in the lineup today. So coming up, we're going to talk oh about boy. that. Oh, boy. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. And I got Clubhouse reaction. And um, would you be willing... Would you be willing to bet that the White Sox would win the division? Would you be willing to make that bet? We will look into the latest odds and try to look into the future. I want to sleep well. well this, is, this is not going to think about it because all the sun, you know, they put it against the wall to the to the front office people. Yeah. You know, they one day they say trade everyone. Yeah. Oh no no no, Jace, hold on. That's hard to do, man. That is hard to deal with. A, a tipping point is coming. One way or the other, we're coming right back.